What are you willing to give up apart from your Philippine citizenship? Will it matter to you whether you can still get it back or not anymore at any point in time? As we tackle these questions in this video, I would like to answer also three of the questions posted in the comment section of our previous videos. One is from Miss Roxy Salahog. Licensed architect po ako dyan sa Pinas. Do I need to take another architecture board exam? If I want to practice architecture, kung ang status ko dito sa abroad is dual citizen, or I can just reinstate it or apply to reactivate it. We have another question from HD2300. Hi po, pwede po ba ang dual citizen who acquired his or her medical license here in the Philippines be employed in a government hospital? Thank you po. And we have another one from Ms. Sam Luca. What if a lawyer, for example, was naturalized abroad after the effectivity of RA-9225 and applied for dual citizenship? Can he resume to practice law in the Philippines without need of complying with retaking of lawyer's oath, among others, since he is deemed to have retained his citizenship and never lost it? We will discuss them all right after this. If you are new to this channel and you think that this channel can be of help in providing you with useful and relevant information, please feel free to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell icon so that you will get notified of our future videos. Maraming salamat po! To my mind, it is beyond dispute that acquiring a foreign citizenship comes with a lot of benefits or advantages. But while many find more opportunities in acquiring a new citizenship in a foreign country, some are bound to lose some of the beholden attributes of the Philippine citizenship. One of them is the professional license that they worked hard for in the Philippines. Imagine those long years of sacrifices, especially in the college or university, plus those months of arduous review just to pass the licensure exam. They did not come in silver platter. We know that, right? We can cite as our examples those who took the bar examinations, the medical board exams, the CPA board exams, the engineering board exams, nursing board exams, teachers board exams, and a lot more of other licensure examinations. They really worked hard for it, pouring into it their sweat, tears, and blood. That is why giving up your professional license wouldn't be easy. But it is what is at stake the moment that you take an oath of allegiance to a foreign country. You are bound to lose your professional license because under our laws, those licenses are reserved only for qualified citizens of the Philippines except in cases where foreign citizens are allowed to get licensed in the Philippines based on reciprocity, meaning their countries allow the same treatment for Filipino citizens. Section 14, Article 12 of the 1987 Constitution provides that the practice of all professions in the Philippines shall be limited to Filipino citizens save in cases prescribed by law. But you would say, it's okay, I have a better opportunity that awaits me in my new country. Good for you and we're happy for you. As I have always said, it depends on our individual perspectives plans and priorities. There are things that work well for some but not for others. People are differently situated and their specific circumstances determine their courses of action, their preferences, and their decision. But regardless of what others would say against the Philippine dual citizenship, it has been a window of hope and opportunity for a lot of former Filipinos. Yes, for those who are open for dual citizenship, RA 9225 or the Citizenship Retention and Reacquisition Act of 2003 gives you that opportunity to go back to the Philippines and practice that profession again in the Philippines, whether it is for a living or for charity. Section 5 of RA 9225 provides in part that those intending to practice their profession in the Philippines shall apply with the proper authority for a license or permit 
to engage in such practice. But according to the Supreme Court, while a former natural-born Filipino citizen is not deemed to have lost his or her Philippine citizenship, there is no automatic right to resume the practice of profession when he or she reacquires his or her Philippine citizenship under RA 9225. One must first apply again for a license or permit to practice and for lawyers in particular, one of the requirements is for you to take an oath again. For the benefit of some whose question I have read a while ago, please allow me to read verbatim that portion of the Supreme Court decision. Given the foregoing, may a lawyer who has lost his Filipino citizenship still practice law in the Philippines? No. The Constitution provides that the practice of all professions in the Philippines shall be limited to Filipino citizens save in cases prescribed by law. Since Filipino citizenship is a requirement for admission to the bar, loss thereof terminates membership in the Philippine bar and consequently the privilege to engage in the practice of law. In other words, the loss of Filipino citizenship ipso iuri terminates the privilege to practice law in the Philippines. The practice of law is a privilege denied to foreigners. The exception is when Filipino citizenship is lost by reason of naturalization as a citizen of another country but subsequently reacquired pursuant to RA 9225. This is because all Philippine citizens who become citizens of another country shall be deemed not to have lost their Philippine citizenship under the conditions of RA 9225. Therefore, a Filipino lawyer who becomes a citizen of another country is deemed never to have lost his Philippine citizenship if he reacquires it in accordance with RA 9225. Although he is also deemed never to have terminated his membership in the Philippine bar, no automatic right to resume law practice accrues. In that decision, the Supreme Court laid down the requirements before such lawyer can resume his law practice. Stated otherwise, before a lawyer who reacquires Filipino citizenship pursuant to RA 9225 can resume his law practice, he must first secure from this court the authority to do so conditioned on a. the updating and payment in full of the annual membership dues in the IBP, b. the payment of professional tax, c. the completion of at least 36 credit hours of mandatory continuing legal education, this is especially significant to refresh the applicant or petitioner's knowledge of Philippine laws and update him of legal developments. And D. The retaking of the lawyer's oath which will not only remind him of his duties and responsibilities as a lawyer and as an officer of the court, but also renew his pledge to maintain allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines. Compliance with these conditions will restore his good standing as a member of the Philippine Bar. While this case involves a lawyer, the same principles apply to other professionals. In fact, the Professional Regulation Commission or PRC has laid down the guidelines for former Filipino professionals who intend to practice their profession in the Philippines through its Resolution No. 1225 series of 2020. They are straightforward. Interestingly, however, the guidelines do not speak of taking an oath as a requirement. Let us take a quick look at the requirements. First, your old PRC Certificate of Registration and Professional Identification Card if available. Second, Certificate of Employment. The work must be related to your profession or proof of compliance with the Continuing Professional Development or CPD requirement and the proof of citizenship. Third, Certificate of with or with no pending case and fourth, proof of payment of processing fee. I will no longer discuss them in detail. For your reference, I will just put the link for the copy of that resolution in the description of this video. So for Roxy, you don't have to take the licensure examination again. You simply have to comply with the requirements set out in the resolution for you to be issued a special permit and update your professional identification card. And for HD, before a physician or doctor can be allowed to practice such profession, the same rules shall apply. I hope that you have learned something from this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it yet and hit that notification bell icon so that you will get notified of our future videos. Always remember, ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. I will see you in my next video. Ingat po kayo!